Alfonso. No, that's His Grace the Duke of Clarence. What the force? The Reverend John Ramsey. Edward Hope. And Michael Shaw. Both friends. This is Alada Equiano. Equiano? Please. You travel far to be here? No distance would be too great. And this is Hannah Moore. Who has traveled all the way from Clapham. Finally, let me introduce Mr. Thomas Clarkson. Beautiful house. Sweet little rabbit. It's a hair, actually. Oh. Please. So, come on. Who are they? Why don't you ask them? Well, I hope the goose is tender. She was rather old. I find the older I get, the more tender I become. <laughs> so, Miss Moore, you live in Clapham. I hear it's very tranquil there. Well, when certain issues are raised amongst my friends and I, it is anything but tranquil. Ah, and uh, which issues are those? Issues regarding the making of a better world. Better in which way? If you make the world better in one way, it comes better in every way. Don't you think? Mr. Equiano, what business brings you to London? My business in London is you, Mr. Wilberforce. What? You wish to discuss something with me? No. We do not want to talk. Because we hear that you are a man who doesn't believe what he hears until he sees it with his own eyes. is for the neck. Works like so. When the slaves leave port in Africa, they're locked into a space four foot by 18 inches. They have no sanitation, very little food, stagnant water. Their waste and blood fills the holds within three days and is never emptied. These irons and chains are to keep them from throwing themselves overboard. The chains are not unlocked until you reach the plantation in Jamaica. Around half of the slaves dead already. In the markets, they stuff knotted rope into the anuses of those who are sick to disguise the dysentery. When you reach the plantation, they put irons to the fire and do this to let you know that you no longer belong to God but to a man. Mr. Wilberforce, we understand you're having problems choosing whether to do the work of God or the work of a political activist. We humbly suggest that you can do both. Plan this. I've seen the literature you've been reading. You've stooped to searching through my desk. 
Sir William Dolben told me you'd asked to be shown round the East India docks. So, you would use my private concerns for your own political ends? Yes, exactly that. Surely the principles of Christianity lead to action as well as meditation. Oh, excellent point. Allow me to meditate on it before I decide on any action. Just think about this, Wilbur. The slave trade has 300 MPs in its pocket. It would be just you against them. But you could do it. You would do it. Do you have a penny for a boy that went to fight the Yanks and came back half a man? Hello, Mr. Newton. It's me, William. Hello, John. How are you? Hello, John. It's me, Wilbur. I'm here to seek your... assures me that I'm now old enough to call you John. Huh. You're dressing very simply these days. I'm a simple man. I try to pretend I am a monk, but I don't have the willpower. I'm a monk, Mondays, Wednesdays. You know, when I read your name in the papers doing these great things, I still see a tiny boy with his hair a mess and ink on his fingers. So, what do you want with the old preacher? I'm here to seek your advice. When you were a child, you used to ask God for advice. Then I grew up and grew foolish. And now? Now... Slowly, my faith is returning. How slowly? No bolts of lightning. Yeah. God sometimes does his work with gentle drizzle, not storms. Drip, drip, drip. My friend William Pitt has declared an interest in me. William who? He's offering me a place in the world. Just make sure you're in the world, not of the world. There will be no escape from power once I have it. I would have to see things through. So why wouldn't you? Are you contemplating a life of solitude? Well, there, you have work to do. Besides, people like you too much to let you live a life of solitude. Hadn't you chosen solitude? You of all people should know I can never be alone. There now. There now what? The other reason I came. You told me that you live in the company of 20,000 ghosts. The ghosts of slaves. I was explaining to a child why a grown man cowers in a dark corner. 
I need you to tell me about them. I'm not strong enough to hear my own confession. I thought time might have changed you. It has. I'm older. Pitt has asked me to take them on. The slavers. I'm the last person you should come to for advice. I can't even say the name of any of my ships without being back on board them in my head. All I know is 20,000 slaves live with me in this little church. There's still blood on my hands. Will you help me, John? I can't help you. But do it, Wilbur. Do it. Take them on. Throw their dirty, filthy ships out of the water. The planters, sugar barons, Alderman Sugarcane, the Lord Mayor of London, Liverpool, Boston, Bristol, New York, all their streets running with blood, dysentery, puke. You won't come away from those streets clean, Wilbur. You'll get filthy with it, you'll dream it, see it in broad daylight, but do it. For God's sake. Sir, I have Mr. Thomas Clarkson. Forgive me, Mr. Wilberforce was here a moment ago. I'd better go and find him. box made up in the exact dimensions of a slave birth. I thought you could use it in your practical demonstrations. Why did you wait until your butler had left before you got out of the box? Oh, they all think I'm mad already. As were most people in the House of Commons. When I present my bill. After I first met him, he asked me to come to the East India Dock. He said there was a ship I should see. A ship he knew well. Mr. Oh. Ekpiano. This way. to dislocate your hip or your shoulder. You are in pain all the way around the world. How long is the journey? Three weeks, if the weather is good. For amusement, they sometimes hang the woman from these by the ankles to wake them. In stormy weather, they take the very sickest and throw them into the sea to lighten the ship's load. <laughs> <laughs> 